he writes, Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Thanksgiving begins with the knowledge, I believe, that everything we have and everything we are, we owe to the Creator. God created and placed us in this world. He provides for us, and He loves us. That is the great biblical proclamation. The psalmist says again in Psalm 24, verse 1, the earth is the Lord's, and all that is in it, the world, and all who dwell therein. So God gives us a place in which to live. Sophia and Emory, who were baptized last Sunday, were endowed with a fine place in which to live. God created the whole world for those two children. As infants, we enter the world helpless. But at the same time, this world provides everything that we need to live the abundant life. Long before you and I were born, God was preparing for us. God was thinking about us. The psalmist says again in Psalm 22, I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God even when I was still in my mother's womb. This is every child's inheritance. This is every person's inheritance. This package of life has an abundance of sunshine essential for all of life. The earth's crust is filled with gold and silver and diamonds and many other precious minerals. There is food, not just one type, but thousands of varieties. There is land to live on, water to swim in, air to breathe through nature's own processes. In this world in which you and I live, there is beauty, there is color, there's music, there's space, there's warmth, there's light, there's stars, the moon, the sun, friction, energy, and not one season, but four seasons. So God has given us a wonderful place in which to live. But we always need to remember that the world is the Lord's. It's not yours. It's not mine. It's His. And we have a responsibility to look after it, to care for this planet. God provides for us. <laughs> He's given you and me a body to live in, a house for our spirits and our souls, birth and life are the greatest miracles of all. This body of yours and mine is the most wonderful machine ever made. It can recreate its own kind. Your body can repair itself, energize itself, grow, 
matures and sustains itself. This body of yours and mine has many capacities. It can smell a rose and it can see a rainbow. It can taste a tomato and ice cream and distinguish the difference between the two. It can hear a symphony and it can also hear a baby's cry. It can think a beautiful thought and paint that thought on canvas. This human body of yours and mine takes 21 years to mature. The longest in all creation. It is God's greatest creation. This body of yours and mine can do things. It can sing. It can speak. It can lay a brick. It can build a skyscraper. Just look at all those cranes and those apartments that are going up around St. Mark's Church. Lay around and do nothing. Or else it can win Olympic medals. It can go wherever it pleases. It can earn a living. It can create other bodies. It has a mind. A mind that can remember and recall past events. We are endowed with a guaranteed package of relationships. We don't go through life alone. We have a series of intimate relationships with others, a mother, a father, relatives, pets, friends, all helping us in this business of living. So God was thinking about us when he gave us people to live with, to have fun with, to work with and to work for. He made us social beings needing and getting companionship here on earth with other humans like us. We work for one another. Someone delivers your mail. Another grows your food. Another builds a house for us. Another doctors us. It's a very good arrangement, isn't it? God also provides us by giving us directions for living. We don't have to live life in a canoe without a pedal. We have a guidebook, it's called the Bible. We have other literature, literature, uh, literature to help us in this business of living. We have the Ten Commandments. And now the younger generation got Wikipedia. God has given us a conscience. He's given us ambition, aspirations, and free will. The ability to make choices and decisions. He says we should love one another as we love ourselves. The Bible is full of information on how to live the abundant life. Our package of life contains also a relationship with the Creator Himself. God just didn't create the world and fling us out into outer space and expect us to get on on our own. The Bible declares that He loves us, that He dwells with us. He remembers us. He nourishes us. We can pray to Him. We can worship Him. We can seek his help. We can ask him for anything. God created the whole universe. But he loves you and me individually. He wants to seek your companionship. He wants my companionship. We are his. And he is ours. God created the whole world, but he never deserted us. As 
one parishioner of this church has said to me many a time, God has never let me down. He maintains and he preserves his creation. This God also sent Jesus into the world to show us how to live and how to love and how to enjoy this world that the Creator has provided for us. God has a further plan for you and me. To live this one life is enough to expect. To live eternally with him is also his plan for his creation. <coughs> Jesus says, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So what have we got to be thankful for this Thanksgiving? So, did you figure out where you will find the first recorded as part of this festival in the Bible? Genesis chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruit of the soil as an offering to the Lord. But Abel brought fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. Amen.
for the prayers of the people this morning, we're going to use litany number 19 on page 128. The litany for Thanksgiving, number 19, page 128. I'll begin with some of the particular prayers. In the worldwide and in the cycle of prayer, we ask for prayers for the Church of the Promise of Central Africa. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for our primate, Greg Reverend Linda Nichols, and our diocesan bishop, Sandy Fife. For the parishes of the Western Shore in Chester, with the various clergy. In the circle of prayer for the North End, we pray for St. Martin of Scotland, with the Reverend Ed Trevers. In the parish cycle of prayer, we ask for prayers for Eric and Derek Galliott, their sons Jacob and Joshua, and their family, with particular prayers for their friends Cheryl Wynott and Lloyd Granger, who both are being treated with cancer. We pray for Geraldine and Gay and family, and for Martin, Jimmy, and family. And now for the Thanksgiving with me, where the refrain is, we thank you, Lord. Let us give thanks to God our Father, always and for everything, saying, We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. For the beauty and wonder of creation. We thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ. We thank you, Lord. For our daily food, for our homes and families and friends. We thank you, Lord. For minds to think and hearts to love. We thank you, Lord. For health, strength, and skill to work, for leisure to rest and play. We thank you, Lord. For those who are brave and courageous, patient and suffering. Particularly, we ask your prayers for Betty and Roy, for Ariel and Jeff, for Sally, Mary, Gordon, Sean, James, Sue, Philip, Joanne, Joel, Jamie, Jim. Carol, Rhonda, Tom, and all those suffering from COVID worldwide. For all those who are bearing their suffering, faithful in adversity, we thank you, Lord. For all who pursue peace, justice, and truth, we thank you, Lord. Today, we give thanks especially for the beauty of the harvest. We give thanks for everything we have received to sustain our lives. For farmers and agricultural workers, for all those who distribute food, packers, companies, markets, food banks, and individuals, everybody. As God has ordered our lives so that we may depend upon each other, this is his wish and our wish. God enables us by his grace to seek the well-being of others before our own well-being. Lord of creation, Lord of the harvest, we give you thanks. We thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. For St. Mark and all the saints who have lived lives to reflect the life of Christ, we thank, thank you, Lord. For those who have died, we give thanks. For Doug Roy, for two friends of mine, Gary Kirby and Joyce Wynott. May the life of Christ be with them in eternity. We thank you, Lord. Amen.
our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
Thank you.